Lesson 16, Landmark First Amendment Cases, Part 3. I want to pick up with the ruling in the Texas versus Johnson case, 1989, in which Gregory Lee Johnson burned an American flag down in Texas in 1984. He was arrested under a Texas statute or a Texas law that prohibited the desecration of a venerated object, such as the flag. His case goes before the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruled that Texas statute was unconstitutional. Very famous quote from the majority opinion, if there is a bedrock principle underlying the First Amendment, it is that the government may not prohibit the expression of an idea simply because society finds the idea itself, the idea itself, offensive or disagreeable. Now, the ruling by the Supreme Court upset a lot of people in the country. There was a huge emotional response across the nation in protest of the Supreme Court decision. Many people were very upset that the court said that you had a First Amendment right to burn an American flag. After much debate in Congress about what to do, Congress adopted the Flag Protection Act of 18, excuse me, of 1989, the Flag Protection Act basically making making it a national law. See, Johnson was prosecuted under a Texas law. Supreme Court shot down that Texas law as unconstitutional. Congress comes back and makes this a national law to protect the flag. On the day the Flag Protection Act passed Congress, and signed into law by President George H. W. Bush. Gregory Johnson marched onto the steps of the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. and burned an American flag. Though this time he was convicted under the national law and again appealed his conviction to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court came back and said, Sorry, Congress. That national law, the Flag Protection Act, that's unconstitutional too. I want to stress this. Just because a state or Congress passes a law, it does not mean that law is constitutional. That is what the Supreme Court is there for, to rule upon the constitutionality of laws at all levels of government. That is the power of judicial review. This is what the Supreme Court does. And Supreme Court justices have a lifelong tenure. that They do not have to come up for re-election. They do not concern themselves if their decision is going to be popular or not. They simply, their task is to interpret the Constitution uh, as they deem appropriate. The only option for Congress at this point, after the Supreme Court shot down the Flag Protection Act, was to amend the Constitution to prohibit flag burning. Congress attempted to adopt a constitutional amendment, but it did not get the required two-thirds vote in both houses of Congress, and therefore was never sent to the states. While I support your right to burn me, I wish you wouldn't. Okay, let's uh, move on now with some other landmark decisions here or cases in, uh, regarding the First Amendment. And the first one we're going to pick up with is obscenity. This is Miller versus California, 1973. Is obscenity protected under the First Amendment? In other words, is there a First Amendment right to be obscene? And... What is obscenity? How would you define it? Miller versus California established a major reformation of the legal test for determining what is obscene. 
the court did reaffirm its earlier rulings that obscene material is not protected by the First Amendment. So to answer the question, no, you do not have a First Amendment right to be obscene. That is not protected speech. So who was Marvin Miller? What did he do? What was this case about? He sent out, well, he was the owner, actually, of a a mail-order pornographic uh, business. Uh, he, he sold porn, very sexually explicit material. And he sent out, by mail, unsolicited pornographic material, meaning it was not asked for. It was unsolicited. The manager of a restaurant in Newport Beach, California, and his mother opened an envelope that contained five unsolicited advertising brochures. They had not requested the brochures and complained to the police. The material that Marvin Miller had sent out consisted of pictures and drawings that explicitly showed men and women in groups of two or more engaging in a variety of sexual activities with genitals prominently displayed. Miller was arrested under a California statute that prohibited the uh, dissemination of such material. California's Court of Appeals upheld his conviction, so uh, Miller took his case to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court agreed to hear the case. The question that the court had to decide, is the sale and distribution of obscene materials by mail protected under the First Amendment's Freedom of Speech Clause? Again, the court ruled that obscenity was not protected under the First Amendment. So the question was, well, was his material that he mailed out obscene or not? And again, what is obscenity? Would the following be considered obscene? Of course, that's the statue of David. And I do not think any reasonable person would say that statue, a very famous statue by Michelangelo, is obscene. Or why? Or why not? Well, Chief Justice Warren Berger wrote the majority opinion... And uh, the ruling in this case uh, established the Miller test for determining what is obscenity. So this is Miller versus California, 1973, from the majority opinion. The basic test for determining obscenity is this. Whether the average person applying community standards, notice these are local standards, not national ones, would find the work in question, taken as a whole, appeals to a purient interest in sex, purient meaning solely intended to arouse, to sexually arouse. And it portrays the sexual conduct in a patently offensive way, as defined by law. Patently offensive would mean it's obviously offensive, unquestionably offensive. And the work, taken as a whole, does not have any serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific value. So if this criteria is present, then the work in question, whether it be uh, a film, uh, photographs, uh, a play, uh, a dance, a song, literature, doesn't matter. The work taken as a whole, okay? Whether the average person in the community applies local standards to the work as a whole and finds the work to appeal to a purient interest in sex, and that sex is patently offensive as portrayed and has no literary, artistic, political, or scientific value. If that's the case, then the work is obscene and it cannot. It is not protected under the First Amendment. So to 
kind of sum up the Miller test for obscenity. It's purient by community standards. It's patently or obviously offensive. And again, the work as a whole, not just a, a certain lyric in the song or a certain verse in the, in the poem or a chapter in the book or a scene from the movie or an act in a play. Again, it's the work as a whole is patently offensive. It's purient and it lacks any serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific value. Now, since the, once this decision was made, here's what happened. Uh, many states began to prosecute sellers of, quote, obscene material because now you had a, an agreed-upon definition of what is obscenity. So many uh, porn shops were uh, closed in the uh, uh, mid-'70s as prosecutors uh, uh, tried to apply community standards, local standards, to those porn shops. Hundreds of obscenity prosecutions went forward. Now, in a 1982 case, the court held that pornographic depictions of children under 16 are not protected by the Constitution and the standards of Miller do not apply. So uh, now you're starting to get into child pornography, and certainly the Miller, the Miller test does not apply to children. Now it's under the age of um, 18, so... Uh, models and, and those type of uh, materials have to be at, le at least uh, age of 18. Uh, under the age of 18, uh, the Miller test does not apply and is automatically uh, obscene. In a later case, a, an average man was placed by was uh, replaced by a reasonable man because it's kind of hard to determine well who's an average man of the person in the community. Uh, the Miller, Miller case talked about an average person in the community. Well, who is that? Uh, well, a reasonable man, okay, would determine if uh, the work as taken as a whole has no uh, redeeming social, political, literary, artistic value. Again, taken as a whole, it's purient, it's patently offensive. Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever seen anything as a as obscene as the defendant's mailings. Never. Jury duty rocks. All right, shifting our focus to the schools and press. And we'll pick up our uh, next lesson with the Hazelwood case, uh, very famous case with student press. Uh, lesson 17 will uh, wrap up uh, this uh, unit on first landmark First Amendment cases.